The body armour worn by gear soldiers of the Coalition of Ordered Governments are some of the most unique armour sets and designs in any form of media. Throughout the Gears of War expanded universe, there are many different cool designs and iterations. So, as always, I'm your host Abs, and here is the unique COG armour in Gears of War lore. We begin with the most common armour in the COG army, and this is known as the Standard Infantry Armour, also known as the Trooper Armour. It is a light shade of blue, with a black crimson omen between the armour seals on the front. Most gear soldiers are seen to have this armour equipped, from Anthony and Benjamin Carmine, to Min, and so on. The armour comes with a selection of helmets that come with a built-in filter. While the helmets are standard issue, many gears chose not to wear them as some felt that the optics hindered their field of view, or they found the helmet to be a nuisance altogether. Dom said to Ben Carmine that he never wore a helmet because he wouldn't be able to see local snipers well. This unfortunately was a slight dig, as Anthony Carmine was domed in the head by a local sniper, and he happened to wear a helmet. The armour though is so strong and thick that multiple shots from an assault rifle give only bruises to the wearer. And the torso part of the armour is more heavily armoured than the rest of the body, offering decent protection to vital organs, but not sacrificing mobility by bogging down the limbs. Then there's the cadet armour, which is usually worn by newly enlisted gears. This set lacks the shoulder pads normally found in the more common trooper variety, and is overall more lightweight and flexible. The reason for this is to better accommodate gears in training, so they can get used to working around the much heavier and standard issue trooper armour. Therefore, cadet armour offers less protection, but is much lighter and easier to manufacture. We see Baird and Cold use this armour set in Gears of War Judgment. There is also the female gears armour, which is pretty much a scaled down version of the standard infantry armour. The leg armour and boots are smaller, the chest plate is also smaller, with a lower cut collar, it has a thinner waist section, and the gauntlets are also thinner but longer than the standard male gear version. The helmets worn by female gears are the same as their male counterparts. However, some gears, due to a lack of supplies or personal preference, had customised their armour. Some gears, like the Coltrane, wore mixed and matched pieces of armour from different armour variants. Many stranded conscripts from Operation Lifeboat such as Dizzy had crude makeshift armour since supplies went to the frontline troops and not the support units. Garen Paddock was seen to wear his UIR modified custom armour as well. However, some gears such as Ty Kaliso had made additions to their armour. Ty's armour had been dubbed Hunter Armour to better suit Ty's native cultural clothing on Pahanu. But some gears that were left behind during Emergence Day and the Hammer of Dawn counter-attack, such as Bernadette Mataki, had to do field repairs to their armour whilst on the move to the Jacinto Plateau. In the summer, due to the hot climate on Sera, the gears would use a different type of armour, a stripped down version of the standard COG armour. This was known as hot weather armour. Delta Squad and others were seen wearing this armour in Gears 3. It is sleeveless and uses a less bulky chest piece within a leg and for armour to provide comfort for the gears in high temperatures. It is slightly weaker than the standard armour due to less protective plating, but is mostly the same. As another consequence, gears couldn't carry as much ammunition as their standard armour could. Cog Combat Medics also wore a variant of this armour that was painted white, with two blue asterisks on the front and back of the torso piece. Medic armour comes equipped with medical and military supplies, due to the roles of medics being frontline combat doctors. As such, medic armour prioritises more on stocking up medicinal equipment than ammunition. We also have cold weather armour. As its name implies, this armour is worn by gears during missions that take place on arctic, tundra and sub-zero environments. The undersuit is thick to ensure proper heat insulation, whilst the armour is painted white and grey for better environmental camouflage. Most importantly though, this armour has an inner thermal heater to better warm up the gear in such extreme weather conditions. Because of the heating suit plus the thicker clothing, cold weather armour is much more heavier than trooper armour. The ranger armour is a lightweight variation worn by scouts of the Coalition of Ordered Governments. Gabe Diaz, who was part of the COG Engineering Corps, was seen to wear a Ranger armour set that was heavily upgraded. These armour sets provide the most joint flexibility of any armour set, 
apart from the commando variations which we'll get to in a moment. This is because of the need for scouts to remain hidden whilst running fast. There are destroyer armour sets which are heavy duty armour worn by gears who operate heavy weaponry such as mulchers and grenade launchers. Sid Redburn was seen to wear the destroyer armour. These armours are thick and reinforced with a noticeable neck guard and integrated rebars to protect the gear from explosives and ricocheting shrapnel. Shoulder pads are also thicker with the thigh and leg armour showing increased armour thickness. The increased level of protection also means that destroyer gears could withstand impacts far greater than normal armour. While it offers increased protection, destroyer armour are also incredibly heavy, slowing the wearer down and tiring the gear soldier out. There are the iconic veteran armour sets, which are most notably worn by Marcus Phoenix and Victor Hoffman in gears 1 and 2. This armour allows the gear to carry even more equipment and supplies, at the cost of increased weight and mobility stress. Due to this, the veteran armour is only utilised in extensive campaigns, when immediate resupplies are not always guaranteed. This armour has a bulky hunchback appearance, due to large glowing straps along the shoulders, that may actually be an extra backpack attachment on the standard Ishukog armour. Armour worn by the naval branch of the Coalition of Ordered Governments Corps of Marines were of course known as Marine Armour. Marine Armour is more silver in colour compared to the standard issue COG variants. A symbol of the COG Navy is etched on the breastplate, while the two circular seals are replaced with a more angular seal. Marine Armour boasts an ammunition belt and pockets, which allow the Marines to hold more ammunition and military equipment than the standard gear. Marine armour is also more streamlined than normal variants. This is to complement the need for a marine to swim in either emergencies or underwater operations. Due to their naval presence, it is deduced that marine armour comes equipped with a standard issue oxygen respirator in the helmet for underwater operations. Another unique variation was the commando armour worn by commandos during the Pendulum Wars. Their armour included special chest mounted knives backpacks, medical kits, and anything a gear needed out in the field. Commando armour was more stripped down in appearances, and the colour far more dulled in contrast to the standard issue armour. This was done for covert operations, in which commando units would try to camouflage themselves and blend into the environments behind enemy lines. Dom and Hoffman were two gears who were known to wear the commando armour set. There was another armour set seen in Gears Tactics, which is called the Delta Armour. These armour sets are used by high ranking Gears on unorthodox terrain and unconventional warfare. These are often dark blue in colour. Gears who usually wear this armour venture into harsh locations with little logistical support, such as ammunition and supplies. As such, Delta Armour is equipped with more ammo pouches, extra canteens and ammo belts than usual, which allows them to carry further consumables in emergency needs. Delta armour provides a good balance of both stealth and protection, as this set would usually be worn in a savanna or jungle. We also have Hivebuster armour. These are specialised armour sets used by the Hivebusters on their suicide mission to destroy a swarm hive from the inside out. The olive green armour is made to be incredibly light and slim, in order to maximise speed to ensure the Hivebuster can escape the Hive at the expense of protection. The Hivebuster armour also has the addition of a Velcro piece in front of the chest armour. This piece is used to carry the Hivebuster's Venom Bomb, a small chemical weapon of mass destruction that is instrumental in destroying the Hive from the inside. Finally, we have the Onyx Guard armour. Worn by the elite Onyx Guard of the Coalition of Ordered Governments, their armour is completely black, hence the name Onyx. With the exception of the glowing eyes of their helmets, a single glowing strip down the centre of the chest plate, and two glowing spots on the back shoulder blades. Onyx Guard armour also covers the wearer completely, as opposed to most other cog suits. There appears to be more armour plates, meaning that the Onyx Guard armour is much more stronger and durable than the standard COG armour. As such, Onyx Guard armour is far more expensive to produce due to the higher quality materials needed to make these suits. So that my friends are all of the unique COG armour sets 
seen in the Gears of War Expanded Universe. Drop a like if you enjoyed this lore video, subscribe for more similar content like this, and I'll leave a link at the top right of the screen if you want to watch my other lore videos as well. I'm your host Abs, and as always, I will catch you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.